<laughs> oh, it's you again. Welcome back. What the heck? Oh, hi. I'm Mark. I've been a professional artist for 666 years. And now I teach art for a living. In this week's new epic episode of my weekly series I call YouTube Art School, live from my work in progress new studio, I'll show you three of my recipes to draw simple yet cute looking faces from different angles and each in a different style from simple to more realistic. Something for you if you're an art baby or if you're more advanced as an artist. Huh? Uh oh. Quickly, let's get this class started. Shh. All right. Classes in session. Pay attention. And then pay the class fee of either one like or one sub. You get face drawing recipes and I get favors from the algorithm. We all profit. Now drawing faces is hard. Or is it? It's all about how you go about it. The recipe you use. Some are easy. Some are hard, just like when cooking. In today's class, I'll start with the hardest one and then we'll end up with the easiest one. Wait, did I say this wrong? No, that's right. Hard first, because that's going to be the most realistic out of the three head variants. From there, we'll just start simplifying the facial features until we're left with the most simple version. This way, you'll hopefully be able to see the reasoning behind some of the stylistic choices that I'll be making. Before I start showing you the recipes, though, we got to understand how to construct a head. They'll all start from the same construction. Very important stuff. I made a class a few months back about how to construct a head in more detail. Link in the video description if you're interested. So this will be just like a quick recap to make sure that we're all on the same page. All head constructions start with a circle or a square, I guess. That works too. If you start crying uncontrollably when you think about drawing a circle, drawing a circle is hard. I get it. But draw one, do it and divide the circle in thirds. Then slide the length of the diameter until the first line of thirds lines up with the center of the circle. And now we have all the proportion information we need to construct the head. This line is the hairline. This one is the eyebrow line. This one is the nose line. And the bottom one is obviously the chin line. Draw a little chin. <laughs> And starting from the center of the circle, let's draw a simple curve representing the jawline on both sides. In the middle here, that's where the mouth goes. And in the middle there, roughly speaking, that's where the eyes go. Ah, beautiful. Now you know how to construct a head. I have the same thing here, but in perspective this time. A little harder since the circle is now a sphere, but we're dealing with the same proportions. Again, check the other class in the description if this is going too fast. I explain things in much more deets. So from here, how do we turn this into a generic head? Once you know that, you'll be able to understand how I deviate from this in my recipes. It'll make more sense. My recipes use like 90% of this basic construction. So here we go. As I said, this line here is the nose line. So let's draw a little button for a nose and a simple line where the mouth goes. Next, uh, let's erase the top of that button, add the lower lip detail real quick and block in some eyes. We're moving along fast. Next, we can refine the eyes a bit more, then add the eyebrows and refine the line for the mouth and then the irises. There we go. A very basic generic head based 100% on the original proportions. Works pretty well, right? That's a convincing head. I'm not convinced, bro. What was that? Now for the first recipe, the most realistic-ish one, I'll start the same way. So let's do the first one from the front to keep things simple for now. We start with a circle. Now, something I usually do for all my characters is give them a bigger skull, a big brain, a bigger head relative to their face. I'll usually draw them bald and add uh, the hair later. If, only if they deserve it. As a result, my eyebrow line will be slightly lower than usual. And I'll use this distance here, even though it's not quite a third to construct the rest. Nose, chin, mouth, the jaw and the neck, almost as wide as the jawbone. Necks are pretty thick. Now let's add some ears too, just slightly lower than the eyebrow line. Normally those would line up with it, but not in my recipes. 
And then really quickly, before I add the rest of the facial features, let's add the other head variants in here just to give you a glimpse of what's coming next. What's different between the three? The answer is the jawline, primarily. The initial circles are all identical, position of the ears too, it's almost all the same except the jawline and the thickness of the neck. Just like we're about to see with the rest of the facial features, the ears also go for more realistic here, starting with the helix, the tragus, the heel of the tragus, the anti-tragus, the anti-helix, and the rest of the helix that we already started as it wraps around behind the anti-helix and back to the front towards the lobule. Very scientific stuff. For the slightly more stylized version, as you see, it's very similar, just simplified. And of course, even more so for the last version. Now we're ready to add the facial features, which will follow a very similar pattern, going from more realistic shapes and proportions to more stylized, simple ones as we remove details in the process. And if this is all too fast and too advanced for you, I go into much greater detail about how to draw the head along with the rest of the human anatomy and many other art topics in my complete art education program, Art School for Digital Artists. Take the coupon in the video description for a massive discount to celebrate reaching 11,000 students, which is insane. You should join our community too to see what you've been missing out on. It's the biggest discount until the end of the year probably, so don't miss out on it. It's valuable until the end of the month only. Now, let's face the biggest challenge yet, the facial features. For female characters, we can use the kitten rule for cuteness. Bigger eyes, a relatively small nose and small mouth, that tends to look cuter. The face should also take up as much space within the head shape. A smaller face will make our character appear bigger, maybe fatter. It can be cute too, I guess, but it tends to look more masculine. Here, the nose is not necessarily small, but I make it appear small by avoiding drawing the entire nose bridge. I'm just suggesting it. Same with the nostrils. Just a few lines to suggest it. For the mouth, I start with the tubercle of the upper lip, and then two more curves going towards the corners of the mouth. Next, I add a suggestion for the vermilion border, and another one for the cupid's bow. And it's done. The eyebrows next will follow the straight line that I had here, with the lateral tips curving down following the ridge of the eye socket and on the inside towards the nose bridge. For the eyes, we'll keep it fairly simple too. Starting at the corner of the eye, we go up 45 degrees approximately, then slightly down towards the outside of the eye, some eyelashes and a suggestion for the lower eyelids. Let's add the fold for the upper eyelid, more or less pronounced depending on the ethnicity. And we can finish this off with the iris. So as you can see, I'm not drawing the contour line of everything. A lot of it is only suggested. That's the recipe. Very few lines to remember as a result, which makes it easier to draw from imagination. Like a cooking recipe with only a few ingredients. And the good news is that the other two recipes only get simpler from here. So if this first one was like level three, let's move on to level two. For these other ones, I'll focus on the differences compared to the first one rather than do it from scratch. So here's the finished version. What changed here? Can you spot it? It's subtle. The mouth here will stay pretty much the same as you can see since it's already super simple. The biggest changes will be in the treatment of the eyes and the nose. For the nose, I'll just suggest the shadow on one side of the face. Could be left or right, makes no difference. I also like to simplify the shadow you might get around the bridge of the nose with a like a flat triangle shape like that. Moving on to the eyes, I've scaled them up a bit more, but I'm maintaining a nice width distance between the two, which definitely gives her a wider face compared to the first one. Now, the rest of the eye otherwise is constructed the same. Start at the corner of the eye, up 45 degree-ish, then a soft curve towards the other side, and an unfinished lower eyelid line. The eyelashes here will be a little bit more stylized, making them into like one solid shape like this. And then I like to add a flat, very flat triangle underneath the eye to suggest the lower eyelids. And I also add a little bit of a you know light reflection in the eye in a stylized way, like the light specular on the eyeballs. Here, the light is coming from the right. That's also why the shadow of her nose is on the opposite side from the light source. But yeah, that's it. Not that much more simple but more stylized, definitely, especially combined with the rounder head silhouette she's got. I'll do the profile and the three-quarter view for all of these two, but first, let's move on to the front-facing third example, the level one face. This one is so simple, I'll just draw it from scratch. 
I'm still keeping in mind all the same proportions though. So now let's start with the eyebrows. Just some simple lines. Same thing for the upper eyelids. The irises, maybe we can draw like a circle on the inside here too. Then the nose is going to be similar to the other ones, just even simpler and slightly smaller. And the mouth can be just a line or maybe, you know, she's gasping and how simple that was. Hmm, that kind of turned into a Ghibli character almost. Anyways, other than that, same proportion as the other ones for the most part. Now, the eyes are just a little further apart, but otherwise, we're following pretty closely the other two as we remove more and more details. So these are the three recipes. Let's move on to the profiles now real quick. There's only half a face to draw, so it's a lot faster. I'm also just lining everything up with the front facing version to make it even easier. Line up the eyebrows, the eyes, the nose, mouth and shape it. The skull is also a bit longer from this side view, so just keep that in mind. Also, some other things to observe for the profile shots. Pay close attention to the position of the ears relative to the height of the eyes and how close it is to the back of the skull. And then, of course, the jawline. It's not a straight line from the chin to the ears. It's a broken line. Now, for the three quarter view, we're going to have like an in between the first two and it helps to draw the symmetry line on the face. So definitely do that. Again, if the construction is too hard for this angle, check the other class on the topic. It'll help. We're not drawing circles here anymore. We've moved on to the third dimension and we're drawing on a sphere instead. Since her right side is now rotated away from us, we have to squeeze the right eye in a narrower area. So it will appear slightly more narrow along with its eyebrow. And uh, well, the nose will just grow from that face symmetry line since the nose is usually centered on the face. Since the head is turned, the right ear will also be partially covered up by the rest of the face. And the same logic will repeat for the other two variants. We'll just have to consider a few more details than at level one. So feel free to slow down the video if needed, if you want to follow along. But when it comes to the explanations, that's going to be it for this week's class. Seeing how artists create their faces has always been a big help for me when I was working as a game developer, looking over the shoulder of my coworkers. So I hope you get as much from this as I got back then or more. I'll add some hair in a few seconds, by the way. But if you want to learn how to draw hair for your characters, because, you know, that's kind of missing right now, I have a class just for you. Check it out in the top right corner of the screen and down in the video description. Also, if you wondered this whole time about the amazing line art brush that I've been using for these drawings since you've been a good student and followed until the end you can download it for free as part of my free brush pack it's a set of some of my favorite brushes and don't be fooled just because it's free i use these all the time they're awesome oh snap <laughs> look at this they grew some hair well that's a lot cuter now and they also wanted me to tell you to make sure to hit the bell button to be on time for next week's class i'll see you then you won't want to miss it What the heck?